What is the best backhanded compliment you've ever received about one of your films? It's a brave film. Yeah. A, <laughs> that's, that's the worst because yeah. it's that's a, a code word yeah. for this stupid, <laughs> um, foolhardy, <laughs> poorly chosen, um, <laughs> unlikely to succeed in the marketplace. Now, I will say, I, you know, the movie I got that. Uh, many people uh, as an executive uh, that was the Life Aquatic. And I loved that movie. I loved that movie so much. And I started to be concerned when many people commended it for being brave. <laughs> um, but I still really love it. I still really love the film. Good but it did not make money. So uh, <laughs> probably everybody at this table has said in some way or another is that the, the work that you end up making and believing in, it comes from the inside out. You don't mm. think what will other people like, mm. just like you were talking about, you know, with Black Panther. You don't think about well, what will other people like. You think about what does it mean to me? What does it mean to the filmmaker? What does it mean to the writer? What does it mm. mean to the actors? And that the idea is meant to be we're humans. And if we dig mm. deep enough, those emotions are universal and then will be received by others if it moves the people who are telling the story deeply. And so the idea of flipping that around and mm. saying that, uh, well, what do other people like? Mm. As opposed to what do the people who make up the academy and who have spent their careers in these various fields, it can be a big giant movie and still right. come and from yeah. a very personal place. Tina, how was your experience with the strategy to get Crazy Rich Asians made? Well, we made a very specific decision in that case, which was we're not going to develop it inside the studio system because it will be too easy for somebody to not make it or to have to make a concession that was fundamentally not true to the movie, which could have been even saying, this is a giant movie star in China, and if you put this person in the movie, even though that person might not be right, you'll get your movie made. Right, so it wasn't necessarily the assumption that somebody will make the lead of the movie a white girl, right? It was more just knowing that this movie needs to be able to be developed outside of the system. And so, you know, we partnered with Ivanhoe and we developed it, budgeted it, found John Chu. He had an incredible vision for it. We went to studios and to streaming services with what was a yes or no proposition. So here's our $30 million movie with an all Asian cast. We want it to be green lit. We don't want to have to meet any particular benchmark in terms of cast of who would be in it other than the best person for the role. Obviously we'll collaborate because that's what a good producer does, but we don't want anything that can get in the way of this movie being made. And so we did all of the work to get it ready so that it could then be a yes or no proposition when we went to buyers and we could then say, who wants this the most, believes in it the most, is the best home and can find the biggest audience for it. You know, the industry has changed so much over the past few years. What is required to be a successful producer today that maybe wasn't a requirement, uh, you know, a few years ago? Can, so I think navigating a slate, mm -hmm. knowing that to get a movie made and released, um, that every movie needs to have its own intricately plotted path mm -hmm. to actually, to get it developed, who cares? It doesn't. It doesn't really matter if you've developed something. It only matters if you've gotten it made. And so with each movie having to decide and anticipate very early on in the process, what is the path that will actually result in this movie being released, being valued by the people who are releasing it, and being seen by hopefully as many people as possible, and to be able to see that so early when there's so much you don't yet know is a huge challenge um, because it's not like studios are lining up to make a giant slate of films that at this point, many of those films are already decided upon. There are franchises that are, you know, taking up a good chunk of the schedule. And so what are going to be Don't the Don't look slots? at Kevin McDavid. <laughs> <laughs> I, I may, might have something to do with somebody at this table. I'm not mentioning any names. Yeah, 2023, um, <laughs> July 4th. Like. So the, if you're not one of those, um, finding, is threading the needle so that you still end up 
mattering and you still end up on the slate with, is a real challenge. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Paul Greengrass. Gabriela Rodriguez. Cece Dempsey. I'm Nina Jacobson. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching The Hollywood Reporter. The Hollywood Reporter's Roundtable. On YouTube. On YouTube.